Over 3,000 years ago, a young man died suddenly under mysterious circumstances. The thing was, this person was also the leader of the most powerful empire of the time. A rushed burial hid the evidence of his death for millennia. Only in the last 100 years have we been able to piece together what really happened. The victim is known as Tutankhamun. You may think you know everything about his life and death, but when you dig just below the surface, things are not as they seem. When you talk to most people about ancient Egypt, there is always one pharaoh that they can name, Tutankhamun. Out of the countless Egyptian rulers, Tutankhamun is by far the most famous, which leads people to assume that he must have been the most powerful, most wealthy, or at least the pharaoh who ruled the longest. However, none of this is true. Pharaoh Tutankhamun ruled less than 10 years. What is more, we have no record of any great achievements during his time in power. No great wars nor battles, no great building projects nor political achievements. In fact, Tutankhamun's life is one of the most uneventful of all the pharaohs. So why is he so famous? Well, it's all due to the events and unanswered questions that arose 3,000 years after his death. Before we delve into Tutankhamun's life, it's important to understand the world of ancient Egypt, which King Tut was born into. Specifically, the religious revolution that occurred under the reign of his father, Akhenaten. Akhenaten and his son Tutankhamun were pharaohs during the 18th dynasty of Egypt, which existed in the 14th century BC. Akhenaten was a controversial pharaoh who made the radical decision to reject the traditional polytheistic religion of Egypt. For thousands of years before the time of Akhenaten, the Egyptians believed in hundreds, if not thousands, of gods and goddesses, who they worshipped through countless temples and statues across their kingdom. But Akhenaten decided that all of this could be done away with. Instead, he decided that there should only be one god, and that god was called the Aten. Akhenaten also ordered the construction of an entire new capital city called Akhetaten, near the modern site of Armana, where he built a huge temple to the Aten. As a result of the existence of this new city, the period of time when Akhenaten and Tutankhamun ruled Egypt is known as the Amarna period. The dramatic shift in religion caused significant upheaval in the country and ultimately proved to be unpopular. Therefore, after Akhenaten died, the people of Egypt were looking for a new ruler who would return the old religion and its many gods. Tutankhamun was born around 1341 BC in the ancient Egyptian capital city of Akhetaten. Originally, Akhenaten had named him Tutank Aten to honour his new god, Aten. Following the death of Akhenaten in around 1332 BC, Tutank Aten became pharaoh. However, he was quite young when he took the throne, probably only around 9 or 10 years old, so he is often called the boy pharaoh by people today. As he took charge of the country, the young pharaoh abandoned his father's religious revolution and returned to the old Egyptian religion. By his third year as pharaoh, the Egyptian people were allowed to worship the old gods again. He even moved the capital city away from Akhetaten and back to Thebes. Also, around this time, he changed his name to what we know him as today, Tudank Amun, in order to honour one of the traditional Egyptian gods, Amun. Aside from overturning the religious changes of his father, very little else is known about Tutankhamun's reign. There is evidence that his armies fought the enemies of Egypt to the north and south, but Tutankhamun was too young to have personally fought in these conflicts. The last thing we know is that Tutankhamun died suddenly in around 1323 BC, when he was about 18 or 19 years old, which meant that he barely reigned for 10 years. It appears that his death came as a shock to the Egyptians because his tomb, which was being dug in the Valley of the Kings near Thebes, wasn't finished in time. Since his death was so unexpected, Tutankhamun's burial was rushed. Evidence shows that the wall paintings were still wet when the doors to the tomb were closed for the last time, and even some of the burial goods were unfinished. After Tutankhamun's death, two other pharaohs took power, 
who reign for brief periods. They were called Ai and Horemheb. These pharaohs seem to have wanted to erase the memory of the Amarna period pharaohs from Egyptian history. To try and achieve this, they began removing the names of the pharaohs Akhenaten and Tutankhamun from buildings, statues and inscriptions. As a result, most of the evidence of Tutankhamun's existence was destroyed. The attempt to make Egypt forget Tutankhamun was so successful that for the rest of Egyptian history, his name did not appear on the official lists of pharaohs. Tutankhamun's burial place was eventually lost over the centuries, and very few people even remembered who Tutankhamun was. That was until, in November 1922, over 3,000 years after Tutankhamun's death, it was rediscovered by the English Egyptologist Howard Carter. At the time, Egyptologists knew that a pharaoh called Tutankhamun had existed, as his name had been found on small fragments and artefacts. However, there was so little surviving evidence that almost nothing was known about him. However, Carter was convinced that Tutankhamun's tomb was still somewhere in the Valley of the Kings, and he and his team of workmen spent years trying to find it. Due to the success of erasing Tutankhamun's memory from history, the tomb had never been found, and it was still filled with golden treasures and over 5,000 precious archaeological artefacts. The most famous items from his tomb are his golden death mask, a flat-packed chariot and a knife made from meteorite. The amount of gold used is still unbelievable. Just one of the pharaoh's sarcophaguses was made of 1,100 kilograms of the precious metal. Why did Tutankhamun become the most recognisable Egyptian pharaoh? The reason why everyone knows Tutankhamun's name is because of Carter's discovery of his tomb in 1922. The English Egyptologist had arranged for his discovery to become worldwide news straight away. Carter had invited journalists to take photos of the treasures of the tomb and to write as many news articles as possible. He wanted this to be the event of the year, if not the century. His strategy worked. To this day, the excavation of Tutankhamun's tomb is the single most important archaeological discovery in Egypt. This is because it is the only ancient Egyptian tomb ever discovered to have everything still intact. The treasures, the mummy, the wall paintings, and even the seals on the doors of the tomb. However, there is one other thing that has meant that people still talk about the ancient Egyptian pharaoh all the time. We still don't know why or how he died. The death of Tutankhamun at such a young age is one of the greatest mysteries of the ancient world. Even in ancient times, someone dying at 18 years of age was uncommon. Something seems strange that the ruler of the most powerful kingdom on earth at the time would die so suddenly. One of the great benefits of discovering the pharaoh's tomb is that his mummy was still in it. This has allowed modern scientists to conduct detailed examinations of Tutankhamun's body in order to determine what the cause of death was. Howard Carter himself organised the first examination in 1925, and three more have been done since, in 1968, 1978 and 2005. However, with each new series of tests, each using progressively more sophisticated technology, the mystery only gets deeper. It turns out, that there are many potential reasons why the boy pharaoh may have died, as his mummy contains evidence of multiple physical complications. Due to this, different scientists have reached different conclusions about what or who killed Tutankhamun. Here are a few of the most popular theories. The mummy appears to have a severely broken leg, which means that something must have hit him with a great force. Some people have theorised that Tutankhamun may have fallen from a chariot at high speed, broken his leg, and died from the injury. However, some have argued that it appears that the break was healing at the time of his death, so it may not have been a fatal injury. There is some damage to the mummy's skull, therefore he may have had an accident such as falling from the chariot. Alternatively, maybe somebody murdered the king by hitting him on the head. Again, other scholars have argued that the damage may have been caused when the ancient Egyptians were preparing his body for burial, rather than the cause of death. 
Tutankhamun's body shows signs of possible genetic deformities, potentially from inbreeding within the Egyptian royal family. These abnormalities include a deformed foot, a crooked spine, undeveloped chest and lungs, among others. These may indicate that he was a sickly child, which may have shortened his life, leading to a natural death at a young age. Finally, malaria parasites were found in his body, which can cause death under some circumstances. For someone with underlying health problems, having malaria can prove fatal. Perhaps this was the final nail in the coffin, so to speak, of a weak and sick young man. What makes it increasingly difficult to know the true cause of his death is the fact that the mummy itself is not in a good state. When Carter and his team initially removed the pharaoh's body from the tomb, they had to break parts of the mummy to get it out. As a result, some of the damage found in the examinations may have been due to the excavation rather than from what killed him. Also, Tutankhamun's mummy has not always been stored well since it was removed from the tomb. Re-exposure to air and moisture after 3,000 years in a tomb has caused parts of the mummy to decay even further. As a result, what looks like physical abnormalities in Tut's body might just be significant disintegration of the mummy caused by exposure to the elements. Because of all these reasons, the damage observed on the mummy is problematic. It is not always clear if broken bones or oddly shaped body parts were original or the result of mistreatment by Egyptologists over the last century. This means that we may never know for certain why Tutankhamun died. The 3,000 year old mystery of the boy pharaoh continues. I hope you found this video informative. If you'd like to know more about ancient Egypt, please follow the links below or visit historyskills.com. I look forward to seeing you again soon in the next video.